Hello. Praise the Lord. God bless you once again. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Timothy Stevens and I'm coming today again with another message. Today we're going to talk about manifestation of the Spirit or basically receiving the Holy Spirit. In our last message we talked about how you must be born into the Kingdom of God or you must receive the Holy Spirit. And we discussed how in order to receive the Holy Spirit you just have to ask according to Luke chapter 11 verse 13 how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Now this is a very important topic and I really want to make sure that we are very clear with this because receiving the Holy Spirit is very very important. I'm going to show you how important this is if you go with me to Matthew chapter 12 verses 31 and 32. Okay. Matthew chapter 12 verse 31 and 32 says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Verse 32, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Okay? That's as clear as it gets. You do not speak against the Holy Ghost. All right? A lot of people say, oh, the only unforgivable sin is, is suicide. That ain't what the scripture says. The scripture says you don't speak against the Holy Ghost. And a lot of people like making fun of speaking in tongues and, and oh, you're having dreams and all this kind of stuff. Hey, you, speak, you better watch speaking against the Holy Ghost because that is the one thing that won't be forgiven you. Okay? You'll get yourself a first class ticket to the lake of fire. <laughs> you see what I mean? So I just wanted to make sure that we, we un have an understanding here that this is very important. Okay? Now, so if you pray and ask God, as a matter of fact, go with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 9, 9 and 16. Alright? Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 9 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that's simple, straightforward. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't none of God's. All right? Verse 16, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So receiving the Holy Spirit, he comes in and lets you know who you are, that you are the child of God. You see what I'm saying? So if you speak against him, you can't receive him. All right? So in my little analogy, I like to look at it like this. The Holy Spirit is like a ticket into the movie show. All right? Jesus paid the price for the ticket because we couldn't afford to pay the ticket. But in order to go see the movie or in order to know God, all right, we need a ticket to get in. All right? So if you don't have the ticket, then you can't get in to see and know God for yourself. If, and, and without the ticket, you just got to let somebody come out and tell you, oh, yeah, you know, I know God, and I know God. And all you can hear is other people's testimony, but you never get in to see it for yourself. So when you ain't going to stand out there and say, oh, I don't need no ticket, and I don't want no ticket. And, and that's, the, that's the equivalent of you saying, oh, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't want the Holy Spirit. Well, if you say that, then you are not going to get in to know God personally for yourself. All right? So, now... Our main text is going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Because there's a really, uh, a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ concerning spiritual gifts, and, or concerning the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1, and we're going to read through verse 11. Now the Apostle Paul specifically addresses the people of Corinth, okay, or the Corinthians, about uh, receiving the Holy Spirit or about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, which is you will receive different gifts, okay? Now, a lot of people say, well, if you ain't speaking in tongues, then you don't have the Holy Spirit, and flat out, that is not true, okay? So let's read uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant, okay? Now, I would not have you to lack knowledge, all right? You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. All right? That's very key, and we'll come back to that. 
Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different gifts, but it's the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Okay? Now, the manifestation, manifest means to make apparent to the senses or the mind, obvious, to show plainly, to reveal. Okay? And with all means, uh, besides or despite that. So, if we read this in, in context, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit, God's revealing of the Spirit, is given to every man to profit despite all the differences of administrations, operations, and gifts. Okay? So, that's what that means. So, what we have just uh, established is that God will give different people different gifts. All right? Now, verse 8 through verse... 10, he's going to give us all the different manifestations of the gifts. All right. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. All right. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay? So it ain't all about, you know, you trying to force somebody to speak in tongues because it's God who has to give them that gift. All right? So God may give them the, the uh, give them faith, the gift of faith, and you'll hear that person say, oh, I believe and I know Jesus is Lord. Well, what did verse, verse 3 in Corinthians says? That no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So if that person is confessing and they believe wholeheartedly in their heart that Jesus is the Lord, I just heard the Holy Spirit talking in that man. Okay? So, but see, most people are, 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 have been trained religiously to, if I hear you speak in tongues, then I know you have the Holy Spirit. But on, on top of that, if I hear you speaking faith and talking about Jesus Christ, I know you have the Holy Spirit. Okay?